Okay, welcome back to the shop once again. Today we're gonna go over a subject that I think is gonna help a lot of you out there, and that is how to depin and repin Ford connectors. Now, Ford has used a lot of different connectors throughout the years. This is only a small sampling. I have a whole bucket full of them. And in most cases, they are replaceable. Ford does sell pigtail kits to replace the individual connectors instead of replacing the whole harness. Now these are also rebuildable. You can take them apart and depin them and repin them. Now the situation where this might be useful is where you go to pull a connector off to do an intake or something like that and get some sensors and components out of the way. In doing so, you broke the locking tab. Now the wires are just fine, but you wanna change the shell out so when you put it back on there, it's gonna lock and not have intermittent connectivity issues. So today we're going to go through and we're going to show you how these are built and how to take them apart and swap out the actual leads on here so you can change the shell out. Now these are the typical tools that you're going to need to take these apart. You want a nice small flat blade screwdriver from one of those eyeglass repair kits. I use a super pointy pick. Uh, this is a smaller pick, but I think I actually sharpened the tip on there. It's very pointy on there. Uh, gets in those tight spots to get those inserts out. And then a small needle nose pliers to get some of those inserts out also. Now Ford uses a couple hundred different style connectors, but they're all constructed in the same manner. You have an outer shell, it's one piece molded plastic. You have your internal terminals in there that get locked into the outer shell with their own individual locking tabs. And then there's an external retainer like this right here that's always gonna be a different color than the outer shell that retains the internal retainer. So it's like a double locking mechanism on here. And this external retainer is the very first thing you need to remove in order to start getting these terminals out of here and fixing or cleaning your connector. So the way they come out is that they just snap into place. So you just wanna pry them back out. So you're gonna to wanna to get in here with your screwdriver and just kind of pop them up and out of there. And you can see it goes in there pretty far. And then inside of here, you can see each one of these. There's a little retainer right there above the terminal on each one of these. What you're gonna do is stick your screwdriver down inside of here, like so. Get underneath it, pry up just a little bit, and then you're gonna pull out your individual terminal on here. And I'll show you that better on the cutaway, exactly how to do that. Here's a different style connector right here, but again, you can see the outer shell and the external retainer are a different color, so it's very easy to identify. This one comes out with a pliers. You just kind of pull it out, and you get the retainer out of there. And again, the inside is exposed, so you can pull out individual pins on there. Here's another one, same thing, external retainer, different color, and you're simply gonna pop it out of there. Okay, and we're gonna expose the internal retainer. You can see them inside of there. Now this one goes over the outside and the inside, so we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing though. You can see a difference in color, we're gonna take it out, okay? And the internals are exposed. Now this one is a bit different. It has no external retainer, it just has an internal one. So you simply come in here and you pull it back and then you pull the wire out. Okay, now this is an oddball right here, but same principles apply. Terminals, outer shell, different colored external retainer, okay? Now this one, there's slots on the back side here, here and here, and you're gonna wanna get in there, okay, with your thin, small screwdriver and pull back on it, okay? You're releasing the tab inside of there, and then you're gonna push, okay? And it's gonna start coming out like that. You can see inside of there. Same thing on this side, nice and even. And then you're gonna push it out of there. And then when it's out so far, it's good to go. You just get in there and you grab it with your needle nose pliers. Here is your classic 104 pin PCM connector. These are one of the easiest ones. Simply pull out the retainer. Again, different color, very simple. And look at that. You got all your different retainers for each one of these pins exposed. 
Okay, here's an oddball that Ford started using, I would say, 04 into 05. And you'll see these are instrument clusters and smart junction boxes mainly. And they have a hasp built right into the connector on here. And the terminals are ultra small, so they have a lot of connectivity issues on these. Um, what they have is a retainer on the outside here. You can see it right there. Some have it on both sides that you want to lift up on the ear, okay? And then this whole shell simply slides right off of there, okay? And then you can get to each individual wire around here and release them. The only problem is since the terminals are so small on here, you're gonna need to use a much smaller screwdriver. Like, I would say something like this. Look how small this one is even compared to that one. And you can get in there and release them and pull them out. Here's another style connector that Ford uses. Um, they're 6.0 liter power stroke engines. It's actually a Navistar harness and connector, but you may run across it on yours. Now, Ford does not have pigtails available for these. They want you to buy the whole harness, but you can get them aftermarket online and through Navistar themselves, so you can repair your connectors that go to your FICM on your 6.0 power stroke. Now, the way these work is they have a tab here, here, and here and here that you need to release and then the shells themselves separate. Now what I have here is a cutaway of one of the connectors to show you exactly how they're constructed and how to release these terminals on the inside. So we'll go ahead and take the top part off here, show you exactly how it's built. Now right here you can see that internal locking tab, how it drives into there and puts pressure on both sides to lock in these individual locking tangs that hold the terminals in place. It's basic plastic shell. They have different design variations so you don't mix them up in the car. It goes back through here through a rubber or silicone seal to keep water and debris out so the terminals don't corrode. And then some of the connectors have a back connector on here or cover that holds it in place also that holds the one piece seal in place. Now, what I'm doing in all those other connectors is just the same as this, okay? And this will show you a really good idea of how this works. So you're coming through, you're pulling off that internal locking mechanism, you're getting out of the way, thereby exposing the internal tang that's actually holding the terminal in, okay? And you're getting that small screwdriver, you're getting in underneath it, okay? Just enough to lift it like that, put a little bit of pressure on it so that you can pull out the terminal okay and then you simply pull it out and change it out now on some of these like this but that has that that uh, cover on the back side to hold the seal in the retainer they won't come through okay some do some don't so you got to realize that also now going back in you simply just slide it into there and it'll lock right in automatically on there and then you reassemble with the locking piece that drives into there and really holds these in place. So I'll show you once again on this lower one here. You're getting in, okay, from the front of the, the connector to your small screwdriver going inside of it, and you're just gonna move it around until you get underneath it like that. So you're lifting it up like that just enough, just enough, and it should slide right out, no problem. And that's how you know it's released in there. Same thing, going back in. All right, that's about it. I just wanted to go over the basic construction of the connectors that Ford uses so that you can fix your Ford yourself. I'll see you next time.